Today I'm going to show you the location of the two fuse panels in my 2013 Mustang GT Premium with the 5 liter engine. If you need help locating the fuse panels in your 2005 to 2014 Ford Mustang with either a V6 or a V8, you're going to find this video helpful. So if you're a vehicle owner or operator and you need to find the fuse panels, which happens occasionally if you burn out a fuse, then you're going to find this video helpful. If you're having a problem with a system or component on your car or light truck, the first thing you should check is the fuses. I will show you the tools, parts, and consumables you'll need to complete your fuse troubleshooting. I have other videos showing general automotive work, modifications, and tips. And if you find this video helpful, consider subscribing and watching the other videos. To subscribe, just click the Styles Automotive icon in the lower right of the screen. Finding the fuse panel is one area that the vehicle owner's manual comes in very handy. This is the owner's manual for my 2013 Mustang, but again, this applies to all 2005 to 2014 Mustangs. If you look in the table of contents and you look for fuses, mine happens to be on page 218, that's where the fuses start, and this table comes in very handy when you're troubleshooting fuses. So first of all, it gives you a description of fuses, and they're color-coded for size, and there's different um, overall physical size of fuses. There's the mini, and this is the normal fuses, blade fuses, but all of the fuses are color coded so you can see the the mini fuses the standard fuses maxi fuses and what the colors mean for each of those the color applies to a different amperage and when you change fuses you want to maintain the same fuse that came oem that came stock with your vehicle you don't want to put a larger fuse in or that could potentially cause wire or component damage and possibly a fire so if you do have to change a fuse with something other than what's in the owner's manual or that's currently in your car that came stock then you need to go back and replace it if you put something bigger in there go back and buy the correct fuse and make sure it's replaced as soon as possible so the first page starts with the power distribution box that's in the engine compartment and i'll show you the physical box but here's a graphic representation of that box which shows you the location of all the relays and then all of the fuses and they're all numbered and then you can use the table and find out which number of fuse that you're looking at so say that I'm troubleshooting the blower motor relay that relay is number four so I'd look for the number four and right there And here's the power distribution panel in the car. So this is laid out just like the diagram. So again, the diagram, see the little cutout in the upper left hand corner here and the relays on the right hand side correspond to the cutout in the box here and then the relays on the right hand side so that fuse that we were talking about was number four so one two three four this is the fuse that we were just talking about all the rest of the fuses are laid out in a similar manner so you can use that description in that box to figure out what relay you're talking about or what fuse you're talking about so here something to point out this is the input to the fuse panel to this power distribution box this is a positive terminal that's coming from the battery so that's a hot terminal so use caution again the table at the bottom if we turn the page the tables continue so there's a list of table 
of all the fuses and relays that are in that power distribution panel. It gives you the fuse amperage rating and a footnote if it's got a star or asterisk by it and then the description to help you troubleshoot. If we go to the next page, we see the passenger compartment fuse panel. Now this fuse panel is located on the passenger side in the lower kick panel area and I'll show you that in just a minute. That's hard to get to down but that's what Ford does on a lot of their cars. They'll put it in that kick panel so a lot of times it's hard to see. So um, you may not pull out the right fuse so a lot of times it's easier to probe those fuses and I'll show you that tool in just a minute. But for that panel it also has a table that lists the fuse or relay number, the amperage rating, and then a description. So if you know you're having trouble with one of your systems, like fog lamps, fog lamps is fuse number 21, which is a 15 amp, and you could go find that fuse and determine if that fuse is faulty or if it's been burnt out or not. The table continues on the next page. So the Ford Mustang has quite a few fuses in it. Inside the car, passenger side, down on the kick panel, you can see the symbol here for the fuse and a little finger hold back here on the panel. Simply pull that out, it comes around, it has two tabs on the front of it here, and then it pushes in in the back here. So you just put those two tabs in in the front to put it back in. So here's down in the kick panel. This little cover has Velcro on it here, and then comes over, folds over, and here's the cover for the fuse box. It's got a tab here on the left hand side, another tab on the thumb side. Squeeze those together, the cover comes off, and there it is. There's the fuse panel. Quite hard to get to. You have to be kind of a contortionist. My legs are outside the door on the ground and my head's on the floor, the passenger side. But that's the fuse panel. And again, it's got those mini blade fuses and relays in there. And you can reference the owner's manual. Inside the cover is a little tool this little white tool that'll help you get the fuses out, put them back in, and grab onto the fuses and help pull you pull them out like a little pair of pliers. Also, on the cover are the fuse numbers to help you locate what fuse you're you're looking for. Same as the diagram. So the cover goes back on. You just have to make sure these two tabs are aligned with the fuse panel. So we'll put the cover back on. It snaps back on. Like that, like so. See that? And then this one goes back on. And that one back down. And then the kick panel. Again, these two tabs line up one on the top one on the bottom be easier if I took my floor mats out let's push it back in that's it snaps back in consumables for this project that you may need are fuses 
assortment of fuses is always handy and you can buy a kit like this with the size fuse that you need with either the mini or the standard blade fuses and you don't need any special tools for this job I'm going to show you a couple tools that you can use but you can visually inspect the fuse to see if the little element inside is broken sometimes they'll burn out it'll be like a light bulb and you can see that they're burnt sometimes you can't sometimes it's a hairline break and you can't tell you need to do a continuity check across it to make sure it works but most of the time you can tell when they burn out so if you're unsure you could always replace it with a new fuse then you don't need any special tools a couple of tools that come in handy is either a very inexpensive test light like this one or a digital multimeter with the test light I can simply hook up the lead to ground and then use the probe to go across each side of the fuse and ensure that the fuse lights up both sides that says their power going to the fuse and going out of the fuse that'll help me check I could check all my fuses very quickly that way if I'm unsure what the problem is or if I'm unsure that I have the right fuse I can quickly check them if you don't have a multimeter I recommend buying this one and I show this in detail in another video but this is a clamp style multimeter that I can read amperage without getting into the wire I can just put the probe around the wire so I can check starter wire really easy but it also does all the other functions of a normal multimeter so I can check continuity I can check voltage and um, then I can also do the amperage if I set up my digital multimeter to read continuity and do a continuity check then I can simply probe across the fuses and if I turn my bell on then I can hear an audible bell as I'm probing the fuses checking them and if I have continuity across the fuse I know that's a good fuse but like I said earlier you don't need a tool you could simply pull out the fuse and inspect it and see if the element inside is continuous or if the fuse is burnt then you can tell that it's bad if you can't tell you could always replace it with the same size fuse the same color fuse same amperage well, that concludes the video if you found it helpful please subscribe and if you did, let me know in the comments.